I'm Rene Ritchie, and I'm reacting live to the Apple Silicon event. First up, the brand new MacBook Air, sponsored by CuriosityStream with Nebula. And we've got it, we've got the new MacBook Air with M1 officially. The first Apple Silicon Mac is the MacBook Air. And it makes a ton of sense because this is exactly the sort of device Apple's been making. When you look at the iPad Pro, when you look at an A12Z or a theoretical A14X, this is exactly that kind of device, but an iPad sort of wrapped up in Mac's clothing, a clamshell with probably better thermal envelopes and more power, but still ultra mobile like an iPad. And now we have Laura Met on stage, uh, who's part of the Mac product marketing team to tell us all about it. So we're moving from what Intel, you know, Intel Y series, what I'm still gonna call Core M forever, gonna call Core M, which again, I'm gonna say it again, is just a really anemic chip, to the M1 with its eight CPU cores, eight GPU cores, its 16 core neural engine, and just putting that into the heart of the MacBook Air. And this just makes a ton of sense. I mean, I remember, back when the original 12 inch MacBook was announced with its Core M processor, its Y series processor. And later that year, the original iPad Pro was announced. And it just made, it just made that MacBook cry, especially when it came to things like 4K, like processing multiple streams of 4K. And it's always sort of been that way with the 12 inch MacBooks and even a bit with the, the, the new MacBook Airs because they've gone to Y series chips now as well. And, this just feels, based on performance that we've all known from iPad Pro, you know, theoretical A14X performance, just based on the A12Z and A12X performance we've seen, this just seems like a real leap forward. Like, you'll just be walking by a Best Buy and seeing all the Chromebooks and all the Windows laptops with Y-series or Celeron chips just wanting to throw themselves throw themselves off the counter. And for battery life, um, Apple is talking about 15 hours of wireless play about wireless web browsing and 18 hours of video watching. So basically the longest battery life ever in a MacBook Air. And yeah, they're going to the webcams, which a lot of us have just been dunking on for years because outside of the iMac Pro and the current generation iMacs have just been potatoes. And they're not saying how many megapixels it is right now, but they are saying that the the image signal processor from the M1, which I'm gonna assume is very similar to the one from the A14, which we're getting in the latest generation iPads and iPhones, uh, is just gonna be the best potato possible. And they're sticking with Touch ID for this, no Face ID. There doesn't appear to be any real redesign yet. And I think that was to be expected because when Steve Jobs introduced the first generation of Intel Macs, when they moved from PowerPC to Intel, they kept the casing the same. They changed the processor architecture, but they did it towards a known target so that not too many parts would be moving at once. And they're keeping the pricing the same, $9.99, so uh, no, no reduction based on eliminating the Intel pricing from the product. But hopefully they're gonna be including something in here that, that makes up for that price differential. And you've got up to 16 gigabytes of memory, two terabytes of SSD. Wi-Fi 6, finally, Wi-Fi 6 comes to the Mac. And I thought Apple was waiting on Apple Silicon because of some of the issues around Wi-Fi 6. And yeah, up to 18 hours of battery life. Silent design because Apple Silicon has that much better thermal uh, profile compared to Intel. And John Turnus is back telling us that they've given the MacBook Air their most popular laptop, better performance than 98% of PCs, which is sort of like courtside, like, like in-game trash talk, <laughs> what you get in the industry. So for the MacBook Air, I'm just super excited. I think this is the perfect transition product. It takes everything great about the iPad Pro and puts it in the Mac. Everything every Mac user has ever wished they could take from the iPad Pro and put into the Mac. And I have no doubt it's gonna perform extremely, extremely well. And yet, yeah, it ain't over, folks. I've got a ton more videos coming your way. And for even more content, check out CuriosityStream, now with Nebula. Nebula is a streaming video service I started with my education creator friends like Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Vanessa Hill, Sof's Notes, Polymatter, and many, many more. It's a place where none of us have to worry about demonetization or the tyranny of click-through rates, or watch time, or the algorithm, or ads. And you can find all of my videos there, completely ad-free, including Apple Talk, the new podcast I'm hosting with Georgia Dow, where technology meets psychology, and we talk about how all of these companies are affecting our culture and our lives, 
And every episode, every episode has a bonus topic available exclusively on Nebula. So what does it all have to do with CuriosityStream? Well, they're the go-to source for the best documentaries on the internet, and they love educational content and creators. And we worked out this deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream with the link in the description, not only do you get CuriosityStream, but you also get a Nebula subscription for free. And for a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% all of their annual plans. And yeah, 26% is just the best deal you'll find anywhere. So click the link in the description or go to crossfitstream.com slash Renee Ritchie. It's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly for just $14.79 per year. Just go to the link in the description or go to crossfitstream.com slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. For a ton more on everything Apple is announcing today, check out the playlist above. I'm gonna go through every spec, every feature, every pro and every con and more. Just click the link in the playlist and see you next video.